Hello, Spy Matthew for two here, and this is the next chapter of anthropology. Chapter six, called Christmas. It's about Christmas. So yeah, it should be quiet now, unlike the last reading. And this is also, I am pretty sure, going to be split in half. I'm not sure where, but hopefully. Hopefully I get I'll get them done back to back if I'm lucky. So here here we go. Chapter six Christmas. There was something about this time of year that always made Lyra feel nostalgic. And since she was back in Canada for heartwarming Eve for the first time she'd move away, that was especially true this year. Still, Homer or not, this was the center of conspiracy so she couldn't afford to be careless. The streets were covered in snow, the ribbons and garland hung from every building, the lights shone in all the trees. She'd always heard that Canterlot was the best place for the winter season, and she had to admit that Ponyville celebrations had always felt a bit lacking compared to home. Scootaloo, get back here! You already got your tongue stuck in one candy cane! We don't need to go through this again! Bonbon called down the street. She shook her head. How did we get stuck into Philly, Philly sitting? Lyra simply pulled down the hood of her parka, stepped forward, and called out, Hey, girls! Want to know where you can get the best gingerbread in Canterlot? Suddenly, all three Phillies were right in front of her. Did you say the best gingerbread? Apple Bloom asked. Lyra nodded. I used to go to this bakery every heartwarming eve when I was your age. It is, hands down, the best you'll ever have. Bonbon bon shot her a look. Well, it is, Lara said. No offense, Bonbon, bon. you're a great cook, but I've always found your gingerbread to be seriously lacking. Hurry up, we want to see, Scootaloo said, bouncing up and down. Well, we don't have much time until the play starts, but it's around the way to the castle. We can stop in for a few minutes, Lyra said. With a look of satisfaction, she started down the street with the crusaders falling behind, wide grins on their faces. Bonbon bon gaped at her and ran to catch up. How do you do that? she asked. What can I say? I'm good with kids, Lyra replied. You practically act like you still are one, Bonbon bon muttered. Lyra turned to enter the building on the corner of the street. It's right here. She inhaled the smells of the baked goods emanating from the building. Peppermint, chocolate, and, of course, that gingerbread. Pony Joe's usually just sells donuts, but they step it up they step it up around this time of year. I've missed this. They entered the bakery, with the Phillies chattering excitedly. Bonbon bon was scanning the shelves of baked goods behind the counter and attempting to peek through the window into the kitchen. Lyra stepped to the counter. How's it going, Joe? It hadn't es es escaped her notice that he had a human name, though he didn't know it was anything special. Some ponies were lucky enough to have real names like that. Five gingerbread cookies, please. Oh, and a hot chocolate. Heartstrings? I haven't seen you in ages. That'll be ten bits, Pony Joe replied. Lyra produced the coins from the pocket of her coat. There was just so many benefits to human clothing. She'd start wearing clothes every day now. Thank you, Joe said. Happy hearts warming. Merry Christmas, Lyra said cheerfully. He stared at her, one eyebrow raised in confusion. They took the cookies and Lyra's hot chocolate and sat down. The Cutie Mark Crusaders all sat down at a table, round a table while Bonbon bon and Lyra took up some nearby seats at the window. I was almost afraid to ask, but what do you keep saying to every pony? Bonbon bon said with a hushed tone. She glanced over at the Crusaders, but they were satisfied with the cookies and weren't paying pay any attention. It's the dreams again, Lyra said, and Bonbon bon let out a groan. 
I was human again in this one. I really like those ones. But anyway, I was in one of their towns. It was decorated just like this, for heartwarming Eve. But I kept hearing humans saying, Merry Christmas. Where did you even get that word from, though? Bon Bon said. When I woke up, I wasn't exactly sure what it meant. I looked it up from my books, and sure enough, something called Christmas was mentioned a few times. I think it's a human holiday. I didn't, I didn't remember reading about it before, though. You must have. You just forgot about it or something. Bon Bon shook her head. I've never heard any pony talk about their dreams so seriously. There wasn't much information. As far as I could tell, Christmas is some celebration that takes place in winter. But as much as I looked, I could never find the true meaning of Christmas. It's too bad. I'd really like to know what it is. This isn't what you were saying about... Whatever that Harvest Festival last October was called, is it? Who knows? Maybe we've been celebrating a human holiday all month and we didn't even realize it. Bon Bon finished her cookie. I suppose you may have a point about the gingerbread. She was eager to change the subject at any cost. It's the molasses, Lyra said. You always use too much of it. Bon Bon's eyes narrowed. We're going to be late for the play, she said. We should get going. Lyra walked over to the table that the crusaders were gathered around. Come on, girls. We're heading to the castle now. Yes, Scootaloo said. I can't wait. Rainbow Dash is going to be awesome in the play. Aren't you forgetting some pony? Sweetie Belle said. My big sister's playing Princess Platinum. She's the best. They headed outside into the street joining a number of other ponies all headed into the castle. Lyra stared up at the gold-capped towers looming above their heads. Maybe it was a mistake coming to the play this year. Staying hidden in the crowd would be a good idea. I've never been to the heart swimming Eve pageant in Canterlot before, Bonbon bon said. And we even know the stars. I'm excited. I can definitely understand why the princess would want Twilight in the pageant, Lyra muttered. She's a great actress. She's especially good at playing Clueless. Are you still convinced she's a spy? Bon Bon whispered. You need to let it go. How do you know she's not? It's not like she'd, she'd tell us if she was, Lyra said. This had been going on for a month now. Bon Bon had hoped that Lyra wasn't harassing Twilight too much. But it wasn't like she could keep an eye on her roommate when there were literally thousands of cookies to be made this season. The, the castle seemed to grow even taller now as they crossed the bridge into the entrance, and Lyra stared up at it apprehensively. They were coming to the entrance hall now. This was where the gala would be held, too. Bonbon bon gave Lyra a look. Perhaps you'd like to take off your coat and stay a while? Lyra groaned, but Bonbon bon had a point. Fine. She knew it shouldn't be much of a problem but she would actually feel awkward being out in public not wearing clothes. There was a coat room nearby, so she left it there among all the scarves and hats. Not many ponies realized the full value of a coat to keep yourself warm, or the usefulness of a hood to try to hide yourself from unwanted eyes, for that matter. The play would be on a huge stage that had been set up in the throne room. Ponies filled the audience from wall to wall, Dim moonlight faintly illustrated the, string, the stained glass. On one side, Twilight and her friends bearing the elements of harmony. On the other side, Discord, the spirit of chaos. It had been just a few months since he'd, he'd broken free, but now he'd been sealed away again and things were calm, relatively speaking. Lara kept her head down as they entered the hall. The ticket stubs floated in front of her. Can I see those? Bon, bon asked. Lyra moved them in front of her. Now, where are we? These are... Her eyes widened. We're in the front row? Great. Just great. Bon Bon, can you look around for me? Is the princess here? Lyra asked. If you want to see her, I can't make myself too suspicious. 
Lyra whispered. You need to look for me. Where is she? What's she doing? Bonbon sighed and glanced around. The entire hall was packed with ponies of every race and color, but there didn't seem to be any special audience box. Princess Celestia, if she had been there, would have been easy to spot. She's not even here, Bonbon said, surprised. Really? Lyra raised her head to look for herself. That's strange. Lyra, you're paranoid. It's a wonder I was even to, able to convince you to come to Canterlot, Bonbon said. They would have easily noticed if I turned down the offer to watch the Phillies. It's, the secret is to act natural. They reached their places. The Crusaders had the very front row. Reserved for the family of the stars, obviously. Bonbon was behind them, and Lyra was stuck across the aisle. Oh, Lyra, are you okay being over there by yourself? Bonbon frowned. She waved a hoof. It's fine. It's pretty packed anyway, Lyra said. The lights dimmed and the curtains opened. A hush fell over the audience. Spike was on stage, apparently playing the part as the narrator this year. Lyra was almost interested in his costume. Was mostly interested in his costume. Baby dragons were bipedal, and his outfit, although small, was extremely similar to something a human had worn. The style actually seemed to match the illustration Lyra had been had seen in one of her books. Once upon a time, long before the peaceful rule of Celestia, and before ponies discovered our beautiful land of Equestria, ponies did not know harmony. Spike began. The lines were familiar to the point where Lyra hardly even heard them anymore. It was a strange and dark time, a time when ponies were torn apart by hatred. Not everybody was used to the play, though. Over in the front of Bonbon, bon, the Cutie Mark Crusaders had just recoiled in shock at the revelation. Although the events of the pageant got to be routine over the years, Lyra still remembered the interest she'd once had in the play. Unicorns and Pegasi as enemies? That had been hard for her to understand as a filly. Her own parents got along just fine, and now she was sharing her rent with an earth pony. When she'd been really young, though, her own identity had always confused her. Pegasi, like her mother, had weather control in flight. Unicorns had magic. For a long time, Lyra had neither. She didn't even have any talent with food, so she, she couldn't just call herself an earth pony with a useless horn, either. But she, then she picked up the lyre. Magic became a second nature to her, and she had moved past the entire awkward phase. They were on the part where leaders showed up for the first time. Lyra had zoomed out and practically missed the first scene of the play. Now Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Rarity had taken the stage. Lyra heard Scootaloo give a quiet squeal of excitement. Rainbow Dash's natural hot-headedness made her a perfect Commander Hurricane, and Rarity was just a, as extravagant as always. But now she had a tiara to match. All three of them were adding something to the normally predictable pageant. It was hard to see them as, as the characters rather than be their own selves, but at least it was something new. The costume design definitely was top-notch this year. Their characters were all so well-established that everybody knew what they, what they looked like. But these outfits came to the closest to the popular depictions. But then again, Lyra was absolutely certain she'd seen an illustration of a human dress like Applejack's character, Smart Cookie. That hat and the shirt. Sure enough, the influences of human culture were even in the heartwarming Eve play if you, if you knew what to look for. Lara's attention had fixed on the stage for the remainder of the play. Of course, even something as simple as this couldn't be overlooked. What was really going on in the story? Okay, so that is chapter one. I mean, ugh, what the heck? Part one of chapter six. I'm going to record the second part right now, so hopefully... I'll see you in the next part. Mm.